everyone. Thanks for joining us here on Tech24. I'm Julia Seeger. Every day you hear about how AI is disrupting roughly every sector of the economy. But how much are these innovation based on AI per se? We'll turn to Luke Julia, Samsung's VP of Innovation and the co-inventor of Siri, and ask him why he thinks we should be talking about augmented intelligence instead of artificial intelligence. And in Test24, we'll tell you more about the Kupel project, the world's first 3D printed helmet. The inventor says it's quite an innovation, as helmets haven't undergone any sort of real change over the past 20 years. But first, French aerospace company Airbus has just teamed up with OneWeb Satellites to design and manufacture up to 900 satellites. The aim is to create a constellation of satellites to provide affordable high-speed internet access across the globe. It's quite a milestone as satellites have never been mass-produced before. A satellite the size of a fridge, made almost as quickly. OneWeb and Airbus are manufacturing around 900 of them in quick succession. It's a revolution in spacecraft engineering. It used to take six months, a year just for the assembly and testing phase of the satellite. Now, we're looking at days. This factory in Toulouse is one of a kind. Almost everything is automated and it can produce one or two satellites a day. It's a joint venture between the American OneWeb and European Airbus, with the first 10 models produced here in France and the rest in the United States. They'll form a constellation in low orbit, around 1,000 kilometers from the Earth's surface, much closer than traditional satellites 36,000 kilometers away. The idea is to provide high-speed internet to any point on the globe. We're going to fill a gap that is not currently filled in communications and internet access for people on planes, boats and in all the areas of the world without coverage today. On the 27th of February, a rocket carrying the first six satellites blasted off. But OneWeb isn't the only one launching into low orbit. Elon Musk's SpaceX plans to disperse thousands of small satellites and began flight testing last year deploying Tintin A and Tintin B. At least eight companies are developing such projects, but this space technology expert remains cautious, recalling how numerous similar ventures failed around 20 years ago. We now have much more mature technologies and internet stakeholders that didn't exist in the 90s, meaning much higher potential revenues. The conditions are different, but that doesn't mean they'll succeed. With each satellite costing a million euros, a hundred times less than a traditional one, OneWeb could shake up the space economy. The finished service is set to come online in 2027. And our upcoming guest, Luke Julia, co-authored series Core Patents at SRI International in the late 90s. By 2010, the company was acquired by Apple and the Siri app was incorporated into their products. Today, Luke Julia is Samsung's VP of Innovation and he's just published a book called AI Doesn't Exist. Well, let's now cross over to Luke Julia in San Jose, California. Luke, it's a pleasure to have you here on the show. Thank you. So why did you choose such a provocative title for your book? So, I mean, the idea is to uh, basically say that uh, whatever we are talking about today when we are talking about artificial intelligence has nothing to do with it, it, artificial intelligence. So that's, that's the main uh, goal, you know, to explain that uh, people are, are talking about something that is more Hollywood, you know, than the reality. So the goal was to, to uh, talk about what is it today at the science level? And what are we doing, the people who are really doing artificial intelligence, what are we doing today? This is mathematics, this is statistics, this is machine learning, this is deep learning, this is, uh, you know, everything that we are doing for the past 50 years, 60 years uh, is the same, okay? The only difference is that now we have better machines, we have the internet, we have better database, we have a lot of data, this is the big data area. So there is, an artificial intelligence, but this is not the one that some people want to uh, make us afraid of uh, or uh, tell us, you know, that it's going to be something that, that, that 
cannot exist today. So this is what I wanted to, to, to talk about. Now, in your book, you say that in reality, if we wanted to be precise, we would have to say augmented intelligence and not artificial intelligence. Why is that? So, I mean, uh, the reality is that what I don't like in artificial intelligence is the word intelligence, because it has nothing to do with intelligence. But since, you know, we are using AI for the past 60 years now, I wanted somehow, you know, to keep the, the, the acronym AI, right? So... And by doing, by, by saying that it's augmented the intelligence, it's basically that it augments us. So we are in control as the humans, we have the intelligence, and this AI is augmenting us. AI is just a tool. This is just something that we are using in order to perform some tasks. It could be physical, you know, with robots or something like that. It could be intellectual uh, by, by looking, you know, at the internet, having some information with, uh, with, with some chatbot or whatever. So... This is augmenting us, basically. This is what it means. Now, in which sectors do you think AI will be the most disruptive in the near future? Uh, I think that we have been seeing already a lot of progress in the past four, five, six years uh, in the medical field. Uh, with imagery and all the diagnostic in the in the imagery to detect cancer or to detect, you know, uh, uh, things that are not good in, in the, those images, um, because of the huge amount of data that is out there, I mean, uh, we have been seeing and we will see again, you know, a lot, a lot of progress there. Also, because of uh, DNA, the DNA is going to provide, again, massive amount of data. So I think that this domain is going to be very, very important in the next few years. We are going to improve a lot of our health, basically, uh, thanks to uh, AI. The other domain that is going to be very interesting is transportation. So I do not believe in, uh, in fully autonomous car. I don't think that is going to happen anytime soon with the techniques that we are using. But I fully believe in the car that is going to assist us and to help us not to have accidents, you know. And we are going to be able to avoid a lot of accidents, you know, in the near future, thanks to the techniques that are going to be, you know, the fusion of all the, the sensors in the car that, it, that are going to help us not to have those accidents. Because we are human in this case, and the machine is much better than us, you know, to, uh, to detect some of those things that we are not detecting because we are just doing something else than trying to drive. Luke Julia, the VP of Innovation at Samsung, thank you so much for speaking to us here on Tech24. Thank you very much. And it's time to welcome our in-house expert, Dan and Jake Cattlecar. Uh, Luke Julia just told us that AI is going to see a lot of breakthroughs in the med tech sector. And I think you have a couple of examples for us. That's right. One example is that of an application called MGene that has been developed by researchers at the Children's National in Washington, D.C. This application allows physicians to feed a photo of a baby's face into an algorithm which looks at uh, different facial features and measures, uh, takes, certain, takes measurements rather of, uh, for example, the length of the nose, the angle of the eyes, in order to determine if a genetic condition is present. As of now, it can recognize four different genetic syndromes which are quite serious and sometimes can be life-threatening. The second example comes from China in the form of an AI system which is able to uh, diagnose different forms of diseases in children by just looking at health records and also handwritten notes. Uh, this system was trained uh, by using electronic records of 1.3 million patient visits in the city of Guangdong and that's how it turned into uh, or rather it gave the power uh, to interpret these uh, data sets like, for example, blood tests, imaging tests, and even patients' complaints in order to diagnose diseases such as influenza uh, or asthma in children. And the third example is that of DeepMind, which is able to use uh, or rather to process uh, OCT scans uh, and determine uh, 50 different eye conditions. Now, this was done by uh, training or rather by studying 15,000 anonymous uh, eye scans. And now some AI-powered system can also determine uh, the uh, type of drug and the quantity of a drug for a certain patient at a certain time. It's well, very yes, precise. Absolutely. This forms a part of uh, precision medicine and a team of researchers uh, from uh, the Institute Loria, which is based in Nancy, in the east of France, they teamed up with researchers from Stanford and they developed a system which is able to predict if there is a need to reduce the dosage in uh, cancer patients. As of now, they are experimenting on, uh, on cancer patients. And uh, this uh, particular system makes use of the fact that uh, genetical characteristics 
uh, determine uh, or rather influence the effect that certain drugs have on patients and maybe in some cases there's a need to reduce the drug dosage in order to maintain the perfect balance between the benefit and toxicity of a particular drug. Thank you, Dan. We're going to move on now to test 24. French company Sculpteo has joined Coupol to launch the world's first 3D printed bike helmet. And the major advantage of using 3D printing is that it allows the creation of a complex embedded uh, safety system, Dan. Well, not only that, it also uh, enables rapid prototyping, which is an important part of manufacturing and it accelerates the manufacturing process as well. And as you mentioned, it uh, allows the creation of these complex structures. As you can see here, there are multiple elements to this helmet. The helmet itself is made of a very strong polymer. It's a polyamide, uh, it's a material called PA12, uh, which is resistant to chemicals. It has high elasticity and tensile strength. Now, the helmet itself is quite interesting because unlike traditional helmets, there are bumpers in it which, uh, which allow the absorption of shock. Uh, then there are 100 pods inside it that makes or that allows an ideal fit of the helmet. And on top of that, you have an internal core that is designed to collapse if uh, there's an impact. So overall, all, the, the use of 3D printing and the use of these unique features make for an interesting evolution of bike helmets. And as you mentioned, there has not been a big development. Uh, for In the, the last 20 year. years, yeah. definitely. Thank you, Dan. That brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech24. We hope you enjoyed it. And do stay with us here on France 24. Thank you.